Hello, my name is Jason. This is a pre-recorded presentation for the 2022 meeting of the Society for Mathematical Pathology. And my presenting topic is on incorporating exogenous and endogenous sources of evidence in recognition memory to explain trial by trial drift variability in the diffusion decision model. Recognition memory refers to the ability to judge whether a stimulus has been experienced before. For example, for a common recognition memory task, first, participant will be given a list of words one by one during the study phase. And then, after some distraction or delay, they move on to recognition phase. Each trial participant will be presented with the words and they need to indicate whether they have seen the word in the list or not. The word from the original list will become target and the new word will be called words. The current study is using diffusion decision model which has been successful at predicting performance in recognition memory tasks. DDM is a type of sequential sampling model that is in a continuous evidence accumulation process. First, after a stimulus is presented, the model assumes a non-decision time parameter uh, representing the time needed for stimulus processing. And then evidence accumulation starts over time and reaches either of the two response boundaries, such as yes or no decision in recognition memory for indicating whether you have seen the presented item or not. An item goes through uh, the evidence goes through a noisy accumulation process that started at Z, which represents the bias to either of the response, and the A parameter in the model represents the amount of evidence needed to make decision. Therefore, by calculating the time needed for evidence to reach either of the boundaries, the model now can predict uh, reaction time distributions. The most important feature of this model is the drift rate parameter V which represents the average speed of this noisy accumulation. The higher the drift rate, the model produces more accurate and faster decisions. Drift rate in the recognition memory is thought to represent the strength of the memory. The basic DDM model assumes that drift rate randomly varies from trial to trial with the variability parameter SV. The inclusion of drift rate variability enables the model to predict errors that are slower than correct responses. For example, if drift rate is fixed, the DDM predicts correct and error responses time to be the same. And if drift rate varies across trial, slower drift rate will produce slower responses and greater proportion of error response. Then when the average, the model now predicts that error responses are slower than correct responses. However, this distributional assumption of cross-trial drift rate has been criticized for lacking meaningful psychological interpretation. In a way, it was criticized that this parameter was only included or partially included in the model to produce certain RT distribution. Study mostly do not have a clear explanation or interpretation on the change of the drift rate variability parameter across conditions. This could be due to that some experimental tasks don't really have psychological theories or previous funding to support variability in evidence strength across trial. However, there's a clear picture for recognition memory where evidence variability has been broadly studied between target and words and across condition. But the question still remains, which is, can we find factors that can explain the drift rate uh, variability across trials, or what is driving drift rate to change, specifically in recognition memory paradigm. Therefore, the aim of the current study is to include systematic source of evidence in trial by trial changes in drift rate. Two types of evidence are included. First, the exogenous sources, such as how long it has been since studying the item, and endogenous sources such as brain signals related to the recognition memory performance that likely reflect the internal state of decision making. The idea is that if these performance related factors can account for variation in drift rate, the model estimated drift rate variability should decrease accordingly as we include this factor into trial by trial model fitting. Thanks to the general data sharing by the computational memory lab at the University of Pennsylvania, we're currently using a subset of peer datasets that include 132 participants with more than 6,000 trials with easy recordings for each participant. 
In addition to the standard recognition memory paradigm, the study also included an immediate free recall sessions after studying each list, where participants recall whatever they remember from the list. We see this as an opportunity for participants to strengthen the memory of the recall items, such as pen, glasses, car. Moving on to method, extraordinary sources of evidence included in the study are first, the power law function of forgetting, which I assume memory of item decays as the lag between study and test increases. Therefore, as the lag increases, the drift rate decreases. Second, if an item was previously recalled, we also assume that item will more likely be remembered during recognition, therefore an increase in drift rate. Third, we also assume a linear word frequency functions, high word frequency words such as word dog or cat, will more likely cause more confusion during recognition compared to rare words such as crocodile. Therefore, as word frequency increases, the drift rate decreases. For the endogenous factors, two EG components have been most extensively studied that track recognition memory performance. The first component occur earlier at frontal regions called frontal negativity components or SM400, and the second component occur later at parietal sites termed late positive parietal components or termed LPC. These components have been found to reliably differ between hit and correct rejection conditions which set the involvement in the memory process leading to successful recognition. To transform the EG components into values that can be included into trial by trial model feeding, EG variables are computed. In a separate study, we also found that these EG components, especially LPC, demonstrate the biggest difference at the time of the response. The current study has tried several methods to extract these variables. The current method uses a response log of epoch as shown on the screen. First, we calculate the average EEG amplitude in a baseline time window here. And then again, we calculate the average EEG amplitude at the time window prior to the time of the response that shows greatest difference between the hit and correct rejection conditions. And the EEG variables are calculated as termination minus baseline for each trial for both SM400 and LPC. This method has certain limitations, which will be elaborated at the end of this talk. To include these variables into model fitting, we use a regression approach, which lets drift rate on each trial regress on various of factors. For example, drift rate on one trial in condition J is equal to the model estimated drift rate for condition J plus the functions for the included factors, which usually include a regression coefficient for condition J to the corresponding variable in that trial in condition J. The functions are generally assumed linear except for the power law function of forgetting. Most of the regression variables as well as model estimated drift rate and variability are separately estimated for target and words. And at the end, we aim to compare the changes in estimated drift rate variability parameter across models. Several models have been fitted in the current study. First, the base VF model that includes different drift rate parameters for target and words and for high and low work frequency items. In addition, we also fit a model with an endogenous factor alone, a model with an exogenous factor alone, and finally, both kind of factors into one model. The model are fitted using maximum likelihood for each participant. To give you an overview of the model fit before going into the specifics, we found that model fits better for each factor includes as indicated by the sum of the model DIC values, and the model fit did not improve for the randomly selected EG components, which suggests that we're not only just giving the model neural noises in the hope that model figure itself out. First, just checking whether the implementation of various factors help improve the model fit accordingly for behavioral effects we compare the model fit between the base model and the base model with, with exogenous factors. First, for the study test lag effect, for this and the following plots, I divide up each factor into bins and check how model predictions match the performance in each bin. We can see that the data is showing clear decrease in accuracy and increase in RT as study test lag increases. And compared to the base model, 
an inclusion of study test-like functions capture this trend change. Second, for the recall function that improves drift rate for previously recalled items. When looking at recall and lag together, we, if we compare the two panels that show the changes in hit rates with increased study test lag, we can see that inclusion of a recall function boosted the model predicted accuracy for previously recalled items compared to unrecalled items. And that the memory decay is more obvious for items that weren't recalled immediately after starting phase. And lastly, looking at the linear wall frequency function for exogenous variables, we can also see that we did observe a decreased performance as the wall frequency of the item increase as expected, and the inclusion of the wall frequency function well captured this effect. And as for the included EG variables as endogenous sources of evidence, we sorted the data according to the computed EG variables, and we can see that performance changes with the variable, and this trend was also captured by the EG factors included in the trial by trial model feeding. However, it was not was also observed that the included endogenous or EG factors did not improve the model fit or model predictions of the behavioral effects that were shown previously and vice versa. For example, although LPC has been suggested in that recollection during recognition, inclusion of it did not improve the model fit for the recall items, which we assume those items will have a greater likelihood of being recollected during recognition. This could be due to the quality of single trial EG measures, which does not accurately and consistently capture the differences between conditions as evidenced by the only small effect captures by the EG variable, or the fact that these factors probably do not contribute to the model fit in the same way. Back to our main research question, we first found higher drift rate variability for target and lures, which is consistent with previous findings. We also see that they include endogenous or exogenous factors, the estimated drift rate variability did start to drop for target drift rate. However, the amount of the decrease was not very large. This still suggests that the included systematic source of evidence have accounted for cost trial variability in the drift rate. And this also means that variability in drift rate assumed in DM is now purely random. Uh, we have shown that part of variability can be explained with variables that are psychologically interpretable and likely reflect cognitive processes underlying recognition memory performance. Just a short summary of the findings. So far, we have found that using trial by trial sources of evidence to constrain drift rate in DDM actually improve the model prediction of the corresponding effects. But the major improvement in the model fit seemed to be contributed from the exogenous factor alone. And finally, we have found that systematic sources of evidence explain the drift rate variability. However, there are still some limitations based on current progress. First, the calculation of EG measures sometimes do not apply to individuals, as each person has slightly different activation patterns, and EG signals are inherently noisy. Therefore, we need better and more reliable single trial measures. Therefore, the next step for this ongoing study is to use a machine learning approach to generate endogenous variables which maximize differences in the variable between conditions. Second, we're also looking for replicating our findings in other data sets with different experimental setups. And that concludes my presentation. I want to give many thanks to my PhD supervisors who have coached me through this project, and thank you for listening.